Okay, this is our Bosch dishwasher. And uh, every now and then it's been doing this where it gets this error 15 and the only way to resolve it has been to open up the bottom of the dishwasher and soak up some water that's in the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to do that and I'm also going to take a look at why I think it is giving us this error 15 and possibly take a look at what we can do to fix it. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the power off to the machine. I'm going to need a Torx key set to undo the screws in here. And what we've got to do is take this front panel off and then underneath here there's another panel to remove. So to take off that front panel, I think we need to remove these six torque screws. Panel comes off easy enough. It's not quite the same putting it back. These little clips are going to be important later. One thing you want to note is that these edges, particularly this one here, around here, are extremely sharp. They haven't been deburred in manufacturing process. And uh, as a result, if you're not careful, you could easily cut your fingers right open on this. There's a couple of screws here. One there. One there. There are also Torx bits. And this whole panel then comes away. Once again. Thank you Bosch engineers for failing to deburr edges. Please be very careful so that you don't cut yourself wide open on the sheet metal. I'm going to take this piece of insulation padding out. So in here you can see the problem lying in the bottom of the machine. It's a puddle of very dirty dishwasher water. Cleaning this out is uh, a simple way to get that error message to go away. And to do so, we need to click out this sensor here. Let's pull that back out of the way. And then you'll see this little floating disc. This is the float valve that's going to trigger the micro switch. So you can see now properly in there, all that brown watery gunk is just food sort of particles and, and water that's dribbled into the base over time and built up. I think right up the back there, I don't know if you can see that, it's also some mouse poo. Surprisingly, uh, given that we've got cats, that a mouse has actually been able to survive in here long enough to come up here and have a drink and a feed. Now, this is the fun part of what I'm going to do, is I'm going to clean out all of that gunk 
a watery gunk from underneath. Soak it up with paper towel, give it a good clean out. Have a look here, this is the micro switch causing all of our problems. That's good design though that the machine shuts down before it floods the entire kitchen, which is uh, pretty well thought of engineering, I think, by Bosch. As I said before, we're going to use a fair bit of paper towel doing this, cleaning up this mess. Look at that. Beautiful. More of the good stuff. Make sure you get right in the back there. If you're just here to fix the symptoms, uh, then congratulations. You can now start putting this thing back together. If you want to look a little further, you might want to start exploring how's the water actually getting in there. Which is a good question to ask if you don't want to be coming back and fixing this thing over and over again. You can see, looks like a little bit of wetness around that tank there, but nothing serious. Over here, got this little tube and that just clips off. And quick inspection reveals there's definitely food in there, it's definitely been wet. Also, further evidence here in this little channel, which is surprisingly dry. But as you can see around the um, corners here, it's a lot of built up food. A lot of dry waste where it's obviously been wet. So, I'm tipping this little channel has been flooding that little area there and also a leak from the door seal. Have a little look at the door in a minute. But before I do, I'm gonna put that little floating micro switch um, system back together. Well, that's that bit clips back in. And you can see along here, there's a lot of food, sort of little dirty foodie bits built up around that seal. And on this side, while there's a little bit, it's nowhere near as bad. If we have a bit of an inspection here around the hinge, you can see that all looks pretty fine. Over here, you can see evidence here that this end, this corner has been damaged. And what's happened at some time you see when the door comes down and hits a hard stop over here but over here it's not the same so what I believe is that this door has been overextended and uh, as a result it started leaking now all of the parts were available for me 
to um, purchase to replace this door. I'm going to do that in a future video because uh, I think that's going to be quite an endeavour. We'll be taking the uh, I'll be taking the uh, whole dishwasher out to do that. So today I'm just fixing the symptoms. I won't worry about fixing the problem in future. Reverse of the process. Put this thing back together. Whenever I'm panelling up anything with inspection panels really, it's always best practice to put all of the screws in position before you tighten any of them down all the way. And what happens now is we get to the fun part, getting these three pieces to line them up together and clip in the correct place is, uh, well, let's just say it's easier said than done. First thing, of course, is trying to have, remember how the full things went in in the first place, because they come flying out, of course. We play our little jigsaw puzzle game. It really is a frustrating experience. I'm going to try doing it from the other end first. Feels a little bit better at first. Still hanging up here. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. Just go and hold your tongue right. Power back on. And there you can see the air is cleared. So we fix the symptoms. Not the problem. I hope you like this video. In our upcoming time, I'll be um, making a video of how I replace this door on this dishwasher and talk about whether it actually resolves the issue or not. Until then, see you later.